Oh my god! I discovered something in the new Black Clover movie that will change everything. Be sure to watch the video to the end because I really discovered something crazy. The Black Clover movie Sword of the Wizard King has officially launched worldwide on Netflix. And it's an absolute pinnacle of anime. A perfect 10 out of 10, it doesn't get better than this. In this video I will share my thoughts, provide a brief overview of the plot, delve into some crucial details and provide some extra information about the Wizard King that wasn't addressed in the movie. Lastly, I'll reveal an aspect many might have overlooked which could potentially hint at what lies ahead in the original Black Clover story. The Black Clover movie has everything you could hope for, outstanding animation, sound, action sequences and storyline. What's even more exciting is that it seems to be canon. I have quite a few reasons to believe this, one being that the story has been officially published as a light novel. And so far, all light novels are considered canon. But there's more to that which I will explain later on. The movie opens up with Conrad, the current wizard king at that time, fighting the Magic Knights. When Conrad joined the Magic Knights, he encountered Julius and a woman from the Forsaken Realm, named Lovilia. We caught a glimpse of her in a flashback at the end of the movie. Conrad's life was perfect, he was happily married to his vice captain Lovilia. However, everything took a turn when he was given a mission for his squad, which was actually a trap set by the royals. The tragic loss of Lovilia and several squad members during this mission left Conrad drowning in sorrow. His grief ignited a profound rage within him that even Julius couldn't extinguish, burning with a desire to destroy discrimination and bias and to build a nation where all can live happily. Conrad, now the Wizard King, aspired to realize his ideals. But his inability to effect change drove him deeper into despair. He became convinced that the only way to reform the country was to truly rebuild it. These thoughts took root in his mind and led him to delve into the study of ancient magic tools. Eventually he took the national treasure, the Imperial Sword, crafted by the first wizard king, Lumiere Silvamillion. It is believed to house a piece of the soul of every wizard king in existence. However, his actions led to him being sealed away along with his sword by Julius. The plot of the movie revolves around Conrad's ability to use his key magic. This power allows him to steal magic and other elements such as the souls embedded in the wizard king's sword and used them in his own way. By combining the abilities of the sword and his key magic, he was able to revive three of the most feared wizard kings and queens. The reason Conrad only resurrected three previous wizard kings is because he knew not all of them would align with his goals. He only chose to bring back those he was certain would join his rebellion to establish a new kingdom. However, all other souls remain inside the sword. In essence, the movie uncovers a surprising similarity between Conrad and Asta. Both of them rely on powers that aren't their own. Moreover, Conrad's handling of the Wizard King's sword bears a resemblance to Asta. Their similarities don't end with their fighting styles. In many ways, they are almost identical. And so Asta was forced to finally surpass the power of a Wizard King along with Yuna and several other magic knights. This demonstrates that the current generation is the most formidable the world has ever witnessed. I want to highlight a few things here. The movie was not just a reminder for anime fans about the return of the Black Clover series, but it also reminded the fans about some crucial elements in Black Clover that hold significance for both the anime and the manga. Firstly, Sally is still engrossed in unraveling the mystery of Asta's body. The movie gives a strong indication that the storyline, one of the longest standing in Black Clover, is still ongoing. Additionally, the movie underscored that Sacre possesses knowledge of certain events in Black Clover that are still a mystery. For example, what happened to the Five Leaf Clover Grimoire after Asta's mother died, and many other questions. Of particular interest is why Sakura hasn't shared this information with Asta. What secrets does she hold and why is she remaining silent? She even knew the location of Asta's first sword. 
So what else does she know? She never said who hid the sword or why the sword was there in the first place. In general, she actually almost never talks. The movie also drops hints suggesting that all kingdoms may have a unique weapon passed down from one ruler to the next. The Heart Kingdom has the Heart Grimoire and the Clover Kingdom has the Sword of the Wizard King. Though the sword's fate is still uncertain. It wasn't clarified what happened to the sword in the end. It appears to be unusable but nothing has been confirmed for sure. This suggests that the Spade Kingdom and the Diamond Kingdom might also possess such a weapon. But the most intriguing aspect of this sword is its ability to hold the souls of the past wizard kings. If you are an anime only fan and wish to avoid spoilers, you might want to stop here, as the following part is a theory related to the current events in the manga. The likelihood of this plotline not being canon is extremely low. We are dealing with a previous wizard king who interacted directly with Julius, that is Lucius. But the most obvious hint lies in the power to capture and store souls to such an extent that they can be resurrected. Conrad exhibits this ability with his keys. If Lucius were to possess the sword, he could potentially use the paladin body creation to house these souls. Now here's where things get really interesting. Towards the conclusion of the movie, the scene started to take a somewhat mysterious vibe. The tension was rising and Asta found himself puzzling over the sensation he experienced with the sword. It was then revealed that Julius had come into contact with the sword. <laughs> The moment he did, he was able to perceive the souls of the past wizard kings. At this point, the music took a very weird tone. Not so unusual that anime-only fans will suspect anything. But strange enough for us manga fans to realize that this was the moment. The Clover Kingdom f***ed <laughs> up. Julius was never meant to touch that sword. It's plausible that the instant Lucius came into contact with the Wizard King's sword, he snatched away all the souls and now intends to resurrect them in the manga. This theory could also explain why the movie's release was delayed to align with the unfolding plot in the manga. This suggests that we could potentially see these souls being resurrected in the manga very soon. Perhaps those who were defeated in the movie won't be resurrected since we have seen their souls dissolve, but who knows. One final point to consider, although the sword appears to be damaged beyond repair, I'm not entirely convinced that it won't reappear in the series. We know that Lumiere often with only Sacra's help invented most of these items, which is why Sacra and Sally work so closely together. It's entirely possible that she could try to repair the sword if this movie does indeed become canon. She could then give the repaired sword to Asta. This would mean that Lucius is the only wizard king who has never possessed the sword, and thus is a false leader. What do you think of this video and the movie and my theory? Let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed the movie and this video then please leave a like, it really helps me a lot. And go support Black Clover. And if you want to see more Black Clover content then subscribe to this channel with a notification bell activated. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.